NLC kick against electricity tariff hike says it is insensitive and colors. Good morning and welcome to the Daily on Echo Television International, where we will be giving you an update of what is happening in the nation from our Nigerian newspaper. I am Sarah Elisha Dasham and Rachel Tanzit, my co host, as usual. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Sarah. How, How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? I'm great. Thank you so much. We're live on Facebook and on YouTube. Please do well to drop your comments or your contribution on any story that is of interest to you. And later on the show, we will open the phone line so you can also air your views. And let us move straight into the paper, starting with Rachel giving us the first paper. On Nigerian Tribune, polio immunization, Bill Gates commit $7 billion at meeting with Shetima and governors. You can find the details on page 4. PEPC INEC deleted FCT presidential election results on Beaver witness alleges. You can find the details on page 3. The big story on the paper, NLC kicks against electricity tariff hike, says plant hike insensitive and colors. The details can be found on page 3. Oyo lawmakers worry over surge in kidnappings, killing to convene security summit. You can find the details inside the paper. Appeal Court reinstate ex NIA DG Doda affirms industrial court judgment. No approval for salary increase for political office holders, presidency says. You can find the details on page 2. Over 2 million to perform 2023 Hajj in Saudi Arabia. North Central South South lawmakers for majority leader juicy committees. Southwest may clinch deputy house leader. You can find the details still on the 10 National Assembly leadership on page 4. Another downside of the paper missing Titanic submersible crew confirmed dead after catastrophic implosion. You can find the details on page 27. We have a picture story where we can see our president Bola Ahmed Tinubu meeting with uh, the France president Emmanuel Macron. And that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. On Nigerian news, the Reg Makande fault allegation on 90 million Naira uh, poll project fund. You can find that on page two. Coming from the presidency, no plan to increase salaries of political office holders. Federal government vows to end polio finance primary health care system. You can find detail of that story on page 10. And on ED Festival, be watchful. DSS raises alarm over plot of terrorist attack. With the rider alert market, religious recreational centers, caution operators, patron of other public places, as joint security team make massive seizure of ammunition, arrest of terrorists in Nasarawa and Kogi State. You can find that story on page three. And on ICAF 2023, NCC herbs on regulations to ensure safety of consumers. You can find all of that story on page ten. Shelf plan to increase electricity tariff, NLC tells the federal government. Downside of the paper, EFCC dog pastor of allegedly defrauding Landmark University, 19.3 million naira. You can find detail of that story inside the paper. We have few pictures to be captured on the front page. Do well to grab the paper and read more stories and details of stories of interest to you. On New Telegraph, subsidy removal pushes revenue to 786.161 billion naira. This is on allocations. You can start with the details on the front page and continue inside the paper on page 3. Nigerians spent 201.77 billion naira on data in the first quarter of 2023, a report coming from the telecommunication companies. You can find the details on page 25. We will address primary health care and finance challenges coming from Vice President Shetima. Police chief decorates two DIGs, 36 other senior officers. Japa syndrome, Bill Gates on same page with me, a statement coming from OB. IATA, we have no hand in skyrocketing efforts in Nigeria. We are hoping so you can find the details on page two. The big story on New Telegraph. Planned 40% electricity tariff hike insensitive and colors. A statement coming from NLC, the writer for the story. Energy transition mustn't be imposed on poor nations. Coming from Ramaphosa. 
There's huge power transition opportunity in Nigeria. A statement coming from Gates says solar energy can displace petrol generators for small and medium scale businesses. Still on New Telegraph, federal government waits into NNPCL FAAC crisis. Adeli Shaibu others pay last respect as Dopesi is buried. Arumeni Ikede Amcom's part deepens over 400 billion Naira Arig in racks and debts. The details can be found on pick three. Marx and Zuckerberg agreed to hold cage fight. The details can be found on page five. INEC deliberately deleted presidential poll results from Beaver's machines in the FCT. The writer says commission yet to produce certified copies of Kaduna Guba results sheets. Statement coming from Asiru. You can find the details on page three and five. And salary increase not approved for political office holders or judicial officers coming from the presidency at the downside of the paper we have a study that says taking daily aspirin increases anemia risks the details can be found on page seven and that's all the news on new telegraph before more further i'd like us to talk a little bit about i think it's on most of our papers what nlc is saying yes. about the fact to increase electricity tariffs is actually insensitive and colors and you will agree with me that from monday when we saw that um, there will be a hike in electricity tariff from yeah. July 1st in a time where Nigerians are still waiting for the palliative that mm -hmm. is coming from the federal government, salary increment for civil servants, uh, civil servants and other you know, workers in Nigeria and also looking at the way that the vulnerable people can also be assisted. You will agree with me that this statement is kind of insensitive at a time like this, of course, because we've seen that till date we're yet to hear what happened to the $800 billion that was, you know, a loan that was collected from the World Bank. Committee upon committee has been said, meeting upon meetings, and then we really don't know the direction that it's coming from. And then we have eight weeks that has been said also to look into the um, increments or the minimum wage. Per minute is the word minimum wage. And they're still in the same page just yesterday we saw where there was a recommendation coming from the revenue mobilization that were in charge of looking at public office holders' salary. And they were actually proposing an increase because they said for the past 16 years, there was no increase that was done for the president. And then we're seeing that uh, as his salary, the salary of the president is roughly, I think, 7.6. So if you round it up, it will be like roughly 8 million era. And if you're going to divide it by 12 months, that will be giving like over 600,000 per month. And then they said the salary of the Senate, Senate or it's one million era. So we're not even looking at other look here, um, allowances that are being given to them. So looking at all of these things, you will agree that really it's insensitive and no wonder people come out to say, why is it that the common man keeps sacrificing? Why is it that the common man has to be the one to keep giving and giving and giving? And then we're yet to see selfless leaders that are willing to also give. Yesterday, I was saying that who say that the review of the salary has to be upward. Why don't we say review going downward? Because we look at things that are happening presently, cutting the cost of governance. If we want to cut the cost of governance, then I think it would be right that we look at other things that are not making sense or other things that are actually looking at, like, for instance, the MDAs that some of them have been merged because you look at some of them, they're actually doing the same thing. There was a time that there was even uh, people were giving that maybe we should see a merging of the um, federal road safety and together with uh, the VIU because they tend to be doing one and the same job. So why don't we have a merging if we want to cut the cost of governance? But then sometimes people look at it, maybe some people will be laid off their job. So we're looking at this increments or looking at sorry this increase of the, say, the hike in electricity that really you would agree with me that it is really really not the appropriate time and no wonder we have analysts coming out to say that if we are going to even look at even though the president is saying that there is no approval for that yet of course the RRF never said that that has been approved, but it's a proposal that the legislature have to sit and look into it whether they will agree to it or not but then just it even making it to the paper kind of give Nigerians some kind of feeling uncomfortable about the statement in the first place because there are certain statements that should not be coming at a time like this when Nigerians are suffering. 
We've seen that sometimes we're even seeing that people cannot even make it to work. Some people have to sleep in their cars. Some people have to sleep in the office. Some people have to resort into trekking to their place of work because they cannot even afford all that is happening. So I hope that let us see if the the government will look into maybe looking into how they can make this 40% in increase of the electricity tariff maybe a little bit light for the Nigerian. We saw in the paper you read where um, they are, we are looking into Bill Gates is giving the suggestion of going into solar which is even easier for small and medium enterprises. Of course, we should look into looking at other measures. What can we use rather than the petroleum? Power till date is a, is a challenge. But well, we saw a loan that was collected recently for the World Bank for power. So we hope that all of this thing will be used to rectify some of the things that we are having around. Everything that will not reduce the hardship of Nigerians as it is now is very insensitive. Because um, just as you said, we're not even supposed to see something like that. We're not even supposed to see it being suggested or even being thought of. Because at the moment now, this is not what Nigerians need. We're talking about a pilot if nobody is seeing. We're talking about a minimum wage that is yet to be implemented. We're talking about people who have to go another eight weeks of this um, petrol um, hike subsidy removal hardship left, right, center, inflation. We, we already have a prediction that is now at 22.44%. Um, yeah. Yes, and we're seeing that by the end of this month, it's going to be 23. We don't know how much inflation increase we're going to have now till the eight weeks that they will start disbursing all of these palliative and all of that, which I believe this is something that should have already been in place by now, not given another eight weeks. And then you see people thinking, of something like increasing 140, 14 percent um, salary for political office holders, and you wonder why are we not talking? Meaning every every conversation, every planning, every work should be done towards the common man, but the politicians mm -hmm. can wait because it is insensitive. And now we are looking at the tariff hike, and you are wondering who are these people in this position that just sit down and feel and have no feelings at all and thought of something, why can't it be one thing after the other? Why can't it be one thing after the other? Why can't it be let's wait? Now it's subsidy removal that is gone. Why don't you wait? Let there be some stability in the economy. Let these four pound prices start going down because I believe there's going to be a regulation that will help that. Let's start seeing our dollar rate going down because now the CBN is floating, the Naira and marketers, and uh, we have the I and E window being what is determining the exchange rate mm. at, the, at the moment now. Why can we wait for certain things that are already not in place to start stabilizing before we see an increase in the tariff plan? So yes, sir, the, the right word there is insensitive because there's so much going for Nigerians and we know who are the people feeling it. It is the majority and it is everybody in Nigeria, the common man are the one feeling it. So let we, let's have a government that is sensitive to the needs and the problems going on in the country. Of course, we hope that they do just the needful thing. Let's take a look at the Friday Leadership newspaper. And on Paris Summit, Tinubu World Leaders Plan on Slaughter Against Poverty and Death. You can find that story on page 7. Bill Gates unveiled $7 billion intervention for Nigeria and others. We hope that the money will be put in the right place. And then on Steve, on the big story here, we have a presidential poll. Drama in court over claims of deleted result from Beavers with the writer Atiku Weakness reject INEC demand to prove allegation with, Mash with Mashani in open court. He can't justify claims when he was not in Abuja on election day coming from Tinubu. PDP ex VP close case today. And we know that has been on the paper since on Monday, that today will be the last day for the Labour Party and PDP. And then the APC, which is Tinubu, will be starting next week, Friday. So we keep our fingers crossed and keep you updated with all of that. From 1999 to 2023, the Northeast, Southeast have produced fewer service chiefs. You want to know what that means, you can start reading the story on the front page and continue on page 7. Adili Kier. Ribado Okowa Onotopiski at Bera in Edo State. And we have 15 Nukwe Day anniversary kickoff with Jumat Prayers today. You can find that story 
on page 14. NLC reject plan electricity tariff hike. And the last story here we have on X-Man Air resume domestic flight to Kanu orders after maintenance. All of that story can be found on page 22. We have the future story where we can see the Vice President Shaitima, Bill Gates, and other stakeholders. You can do well to grab the paper and read details of stories of interest to you. On the Guardian newspaper, we have a picture story and a big story on the paper that says Flood of Fury. No respite for Bielsa, Kogi, Rivers, Tati others ahead of another cloud burst. You can find the details on page 4 and 5 and we can see what people are going through with the flood at the moment. Again, NNPC fails to remit as Federation shares 786 billion Naira for May. So we can see an increase compared to the fall in the previous month. You can find the details on page 6. It's no longer business as usual in Nigeria. Tinibu relies investors. I'll take that story again. It's no longer business as usual in Nigeria. Tinibu rallies investors. You can find the details on page 6. Missing Titanic sub suffered catastrophic implosion and passengers dead. Forensic expert claims INEC deleted results on Beaver machine. 20% doctors, 33% nurses diagnosed accurately federal government hints. You can find the details on page 7. At the downside of the paper, NLC cautions government against increasing electricity tariff. And that's all the news on the Guardian newspaper. Richard, I'd like to talk about the flood we can see, which is a big story yes. here. And when you remember the flood we had last year, that was really, really... I mean, that flood really did disaster and destruction. We saw where rice farms were being destroyed in Nasarawa State. We saw where Bayelsa was being one of those places. Kogi was flooding. Mm -hmm. We tankers were unable to get yes. into the, you know, into oh, the okay. cities because of the flooding. Mm -hmm. And then they had to be there for uh, up to a week days, or so yeah. days mm -hmm. because they're unable to pass, have to wait for the water to go down. And then we saw some of stories that were coming up that because the dam was being released in another country that affected mm -hmm. our country yes, uh, of course yeah. thank you so much Richard for reminding me on Cameroon precisely and then right now we have not seen anything whatsoever of course they have been hinted that we should rain will come early this year mm -hmm. states should take um, should take whatever measures they can take to protect lives and now we can see there there's still another flooding. There was flooding mm -hmm. in Lagos, flooding in other parts of the country. Now, question is, what can we do about this flooding? Of course, there are other smaller measures that have been, like if you're living by where there are waterways, make sure that you let it clear all the drainages to make sure nothing whatsoever. People who are building by the waterways should please take caution of all of that. Talking about mining that causes erosion and then washing of the earth that causes, um, you know, flooding mm -hmm. and then houses collapsing for those yeah. who do not build on solid foundation. A lot of things are responsible for this. Now the question is, what can we do? Of course, we cannot stop the fact that some of the activities of man have affected those who lay that keeps causing all of these things. So, so many you know, um, like say, causes or factors are responsible for this. But what can Nigeria do to actually avert this? This is a question that I know a common man out there needs answers to. What can Nigeria do? Some of the basic things, apart from clean, cleaning of the drainages, because we're tired of medicine after death in this country. Always we wait for when there's disaster, and then we start looking for how to correct it. Instead of waiting for how to prevent it first, let's prevent it. We always go for correcting it after the damage has been done already. When you look at climate change globally, it is becoming a threat all over the world. Mm. And then Nigeria, as it is, because we've been sleeping, is hitting us hard, even in places and where it's not supposed to hit us. And since last year, even when the rain was going on, after it shortly, there was already warning that there's going to be flooding next year also. However, the question is what was done since last year till now concerning this flooding? Were these people not told to evacuate where they are? Because usually when such um, mm -hmm. report comes and warning, is because maybe what could be done at that time cannot be done effectively. So what is to be done is to save their lives and property there. Was there warning to these people that we're seeing houses already covered? Because what is expected is that there are some climate activities that happen that 
uh, much cannot be done rather than evacuating a certain place. When you are able to evacuate, you take important properties, you leave, then you will see that you might not be that much as a loss because these are the kind of things that there would be government intervention when the place becomes habitable later. So the question is, are we putting things in place to make sure that the warning is being out there? Because these this are results of us sleeping all these years because climate change is not something, it's not a warning that happened last year. There have been a lot of global changes mm. and warnings that have been going on for 10 years that you know what, the climate is going to change. There will be more flooding, there will be more rain because I believe that countries that are having hurricanes coming to them mm. and all of that have been warned and that's why you see them evacuating and knowing. But then the problem with us developing countries, rather underdeveloped countries or third world countries, is that we don't speak or do anything about this warning. And so when they come, the things that could be avoided, like people evacuating a place, so that even if there would be loss mm. of properties, there won't be loss of lives. But we are finding a situation where people are not being warned to leave a certain place. The right work that is supposed to be done to say, okay, you know what, this place is going to be flooded because there is a waterway, there are no enough drainages, there's nothing that has been put to control the water that is to give it the direction to go. Nothing has been done in this area, so leave it. But then we are seeing that such is not being done around here. So we just hope that the things that are needed to be put in place, seller, to make sure that we are having no lives being lost, and that because as it is now, we are just in the middle of, and the rainy season is not about to finish. So more of this is going to come. So what is the next plan? What is the plan B? If we didn't work on plan A, what is plan B? I believe that is what should start being implemented right now concerning flooding Nigeria. Of course, I hope that the president is taking notice of all of this. And so when appointing ministers, you know, the right person for the job. Yeah. Still on the paper, we saw a 20% doctor, 33% nurses mm. diagnosed inaccurately. Yeah. Federal government hint. It breaks my heart because, of course, we've had loved ones close to us. We've heard stories of people that sure. were being given wrong diagnosis yes. and then, you know, actually resulted into them, you know, going early when they should have not gone yeah, at all that time. True. And all of these things can still boil down to going down to our foundation. Mm. Talking about the, 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 the training our doctors receive, talking about the welfare they receive, because of course, when they are not well taken care of, this mm. is not an excuse mm -hmm. for doctors and nurses to, um, not to take their job seriously. But this, we have seen that over years and over the time, these have been the cases we've been seeing. We've heard when you're supposed to be giving this particular drop, you're giving the wrong the pill wrong at the end of yeah. the day when this was supposed to be done. It has the carelessness have even gone to the point where certain things are being forgotten when operating mm -hmm. patients. So, so these are things that might look or sound funny, but these are realities that is happening. And no wonder I made it to the paper. So now you begin to ask, what is the problem? And I saved the story of the Japa syndrome where Peter Obi was saying that Bill Gates agreed with him that we are going to benefit. Of course, we've been complaining over the years that brain drain, brain drain are professionals are leaving. Yeah. And you remember me, I said, Rachel, we have countries that benefit from when professionals leave because they get to generate revenue mm -hmm. back into the country. But do you see that case happening in Nigeria mm -hmm. anytime soon? Because from the way it's looking, Nigeria can only benefit if Nigeria is ready to put the work done. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to make the environment, you know, favorable for all of these professionals that keep leaving, I think that is the only way we're going to see us benefiting from it. If not, we'll have Nigerians that leave the shores of Nigeria and are not planning to come. No wonder some of them in UK are complaining when they say they can't bring their family members over, especially if you are just schooling for just a few years. So I'm looking forward to what can we do. We're seeing the percentage of people here, 20% doctors, and then over 33% nurses. No wonder you hear people saying that nurses are wicked. Why? Because they're mm -hmm. not being taken care of. Yeah. Some of them are actually doing it out of frustration and anger because they have no choice whatsoever. We see a doctor working in more than three hospitals because they are trying to meet up with their daily bread. A lot of things are responsible for this, but what can we do for it? Of course, we can't give all the answers to all of this thing, but there are certain steps or recommendations that can be made so we can see how we can avert all of this thing from reoccurring over and over again. You know, Stella, when it comes to our health sector, it's very sensitive because there's so many factors in play when it comes to diagnostics and all of that. And I'm not going to say that there is no 
inaccurate um, diagnostics coming as the fault of our doctors because one thing I notice is that they lack being thorough in their jobs. When you can perform over 20 examinations on a patient to know exactly what it is, we give up just after five or 10. And we don't, we are not thorough because I've, I've gone to the hospital and when is the doctor that's supposed to be asking me a certain question, he's waiting for me to explain. And I'm here, doctor, like it's you that I want you to tell me what's wrong with me. I have no idea, so I need your help with that. And it was reversed was the case. And it's, it's just one of the few. Mine was not something serious. So imagine if it was for something really serious and then you were in a helpless situation and you're being asked questions, you have no idea. And I'm, I'm like, I'm here because I trust you. And it feels like you don't have the solution for me. Now, why I say it's a sensitive one, it's because there's a lot of things in play. Now, whether we like it or not, our health sector is very backward seller. We lack the facilities that are needed. We lack the technology that are needed. We lack advanced machines and technologies that world, world-class technology. We lack them in our healthcare system. There are machines that can diagnose hundreds of, of whatever is going on in the body. We don't have that, and we are depending on only the private um, hospitals to have that. And we know that the majority of Nigerians are in our, in our, in our in the state owned or federal hospitals. So when you look at it, it is a two way thing. Yes, you can blame it on the doctors and the nurses as well, but this is a 50, in fact, I think it's more of a 60 to 40 percent, maybe we can say yes we have careless nurses and doctors but we are also looking at people working with limited resources and it's easy for them to get tired because when you don't have all hands on deck there are negligence that will come as a result of certain things so yes we would not we cannot remove the fact that there are nurses and doctors that are not taking their job seriously at the same time we are looking at a system that they don't have enough facilities mm -hmm. that they don't have everything they need to also work accurately well we just look forward to that being you know corrected well let's take a look at the daily asset newspaper FAAC shares 786.16 billion naira May 2023 revenue to federal government states and LGCs the big story to Nibon Paris will global investors find detail of that story on the front page and inside the paper. Emotions as AIT founder Raymond Topiski is buried. You can find that story inside the paper as well. Presidency deny approving salary increase for political office holders. FG set to enforce sanitary law says mobile court on the way. You can find that story inside the paper. And certificate forgery. Enugu Tribunal orders Governor Imba appearance June 23rd, which is today. So you keep our fingers crossed to see what that will come up with. Downside of the paper, Plus Two Assembly approves Mood Fund 15 billion Naira loan request. You can find detail of that story. On page six, we have other smaller stories and a picture story that is captured on the front page of the paper. Do well to grab the daily asset and read detail of stories that are of interest to you. But before we move next to other papers, we'd love to take a break at this moment to open the phone line so we hear what your comments are and what your thoughts are concerning any story that's of interest. Please do not go and we'll be right back. Democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Join me every Friday, 7 p.m. on National Talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around Nigeria, as well as an opportunity to add your voice.
Thanks for staying tuned. It's still the daily is on Aircraft Television International. We're keeping you updated with what is happening on the papers. We've seen that NLC have said that the electricity tariff hike is insensitive at a time like this, and the presidency have said there is no approval of increase of salary for public office holders. These and a lot of stories are what we have been looking at on the paper at this moment. So our number is displayed on your screen. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are, what your contributions are concerning any of the story that is of interest to you. Please do remember to turn down the volume of your TV set um, when you cut us, and then uh, maybe possibly if you really want to keep your TV set on, you just turn down the volume very low so we can hear you clearly here in the studio. I still have Rachel Sandy with me in the studio. Thanks so much. You're welcome, sir. All right, let's move on to the next paper before our calls coming from the Blueprint newspaper. All right, we have a call. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Morning, good sir. Morning. Uh, yeah, good morning. This is uh, Mr. Sam. I call from Buari. All right, Ab Mr. Sam, Abuja. go ahead, please. Yes, I hope you are all fine this morning. Yes, we are. Okay, uh, some of us will not stop talking and do the cry of the common man. Many of these are not uh, opportune to have uh, a way of airing their views. And uh, we have to be able to speak out, hoping that those in authority will hear uh, at the, at the cry of the masses and do something to am am ameliorate. Uh, you two will agree with me that Nigeria is one of the m easiest country to govern. Whatever you throw at the poor man, he just uh, go sleep with it and say, well, the, he leave everything to God. So we have come to a situation whereby uh, we just sleep with our problem, no matter. And th for this reason, the, the politician has taken it uh, as, you know, for granted. They will not do anything. Some of them will only cry. So my take this morning is on the electricity bill, which uh, the NLC is crying. That is a double tragedy, given other, uh, you know, increases that have been raised. Then, of course, uh, you have, uh, you match that with uh, even the pump price. All this is piling on the common man who is already downtrodden. Then, if you wait that, just oppose that with the salaries of office holders. Well, it may, uh, the, the authority may now claim that it's not, but there's no smoke without fire, we are taught. So, maybe because uh, uh, it has come to the general public and they have now weighed out the condemnation, they are denying. But uh, if you look at the, the issue in Nigeria, why will it be always the ordinary man that will always bear the brunt of sacrificing to alleviate this country? If you know that uh, since uh, since the military, they have already been what they call subsidy remover with a continual increase in the salaries. And um, every time they will say we should make sacrifices. We have been doing that from the, when the fuel was just 15 uh, naira per, per liter. And up to today, now, that yesterday I was at the filling station, the, the fuel was bought at 514 naira. You cannot imagine that um, 2,000 can, I mean, 1,000 naira cannot give you one, uh, two liters of fuel. And then we are now made to be a, a more sacrificed. But my question this morning is that when will the politician ready to make the sacrifices to and the compatriot, when are they ready to be able to say, OK, we have seen the suffering of the masses, so let them reduce our salaries, uh, income and allowances, so that we, uh, much of what is recovered can use to, to help the poor. If you look at Senegal about eight years ago, Senegal look at the, the bicameral legislation between the House of Rep and the uh, 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 Senate. They say, no, the cost of governance is too much. So let us remove the Senate and now work with the House of Rep, which has a more representative. And today, Senegal is doing better. They are doing the presidential system. Why can't we copy something like this? Why right. is it that politi uh, politics is the most uh, profitable venture in Nigeria? Everybody wants to go into politics. Once you are there, uh, every of your uh, this thing is, is am, am, ameliorated. So we will continue to cry that the, the poor, you, I mean the rich, should also now understand the, the, the suffering. Mm -hmm. Let them also be there. This thing. Since we are all compatible, we all sing the national anthem. I rest my case this morning. I have a great uh, press review. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Sam, for your contribution. Please, to all the callers, do remember that all the callers are queuing up to air their views. Please make your comment as brief as possible at most a minute. Thank you so much, Mr. Sam, for that very insightful, you know, analysis. Please, let's move on to the next paper. On the Blueprint newspaper, Tinebu to EBRD, Afrimim's bank president with oil subsidy. Yeah, yeah. 
Engineer. All right, go ahead, please, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Now you're giving me my title. Okay, go ahead, uh, please, sir. I see you. Thank you, all of you, Sele, in that uh, studio. Yes, my first uh, regard is to the guru, uh, Mr. Sam from Bari. Uh, well, uh, he has said it all, but the truth is that uh, my take on the dailies this morning is um, this uh, increment in salary, which they said is not going to be on this politi uh, political uh, aspirant or maybe those leaders on top. Well, it's just the truth. If they are really patriot, why won't they sacrifice their salary? When Buhari came to power, he said he's not going to collect salary at all, and his salary is going to be used for at least to help the poor masses. But at the end of the day, it doesn't work that way, you see. So thank you very much. For Mr. Sam Buhari, I didn't hear him yesterday, so the dailies were so boring to me. So thank you very much, Mr. Sam. All right, thank you so much, sir. Still on the blueprint newspaper, the big story, Tinubu to EBRD, Afrizim Bank president. With oil subsidy removal, we are ready for business coming from investors. Says we need reforms for national survival. Concern over primary health care financing will be addressed coming from Shetima. Gates Foundation to spend $7 billion on interventions in four years. You can find the details on page 6. Unmetered consumers increase as discourse customers hit 11.27 million in the first quarter of 2023. Lagos Deputy Governor swore to renounce Nigerian citizenship coming from U.S. Immigration, you can find the details on page 18. At the downside of the paper, we have uh, Makulu Bax, Tinubu's foreign exchange policy says stronger Naira will discourage exports. Inspector jailed 22 years for impregnating daughter and killing newborn. This happened in Niger. You can find the details on page 14. Anxiety in Senate as wicked lobbies of Pabio over minority position. Tinubu sets up committee to wade into 4.2 trillion Naira, 2.1 trillion Naira, NNPCL, FAAC Raw. You can find the details on page 6, and that's all the news on Blueprint newspaper. On the Punch newspaper, federal government, state, local government share 786 billion May revenue. You can find the story on page 24. Labor discuss on coalition costs over electricity tariff hike. Terrorists planning attack on religious phone centers and DSS-1. You can find that story inside the paper. And I think it's important that we take all of this one seriously. There are times where we see, um, you know, warning coming from the DSS and we don't take that serious. I'm happy that with this, DSS is already given a warning for. So people that have all these recreational center, marketplaces, please, when you go to the market, try and get what you want to get and leave with immediate effect. Don't spend too much time where there's crowd. Still on the Punch newspaper, DMO worries over low revenue as Nigerians debt hears 81 trillion naira. With the rider, federal government 10 trillion naira revenue can't support fresh borrowing coming from the DMO. Government to issue promissory note as judgment debt nears 3 trillion naira. You can find that story inside the paper. For the picture story we have on the Paris summit, subsidy removal. Foreign exchange policy needed for survivors, says Tinubu. You can find that story on page 19. Ogun top as MPC registered 49,000 deaths in six months. You can find all of that story on page 13. Scholars should not be regulated for money backs coming from Lasu best student. And the last story here, Oshomole Adeleke orders beat farewell as Topkiski is buried. You can find that story on page 14. And that's all on the punch newspaper. On Daily Independent, Nigerians lost 12.5 billion naira to e fraud in four years. A report coming from NCC. Tinubu didn't okay 114% salary increase for political office holders. Statement coming from the presidency. 
and the big story it celebrations they assess a lot on plan attack on worship recreational centers many feared killed as gunmen in great kogi community navdak declares noodles made in nigeria safe for consumption Federal government to tackle primary health care financing concerns coming from Shetima. And at the Paris summit, Tinubu world leaders brainstorm on raising poverty and debt burden. Court sets aside ruling barring PDP from challenging APC's nomination of a governor. Sangwo Lu rewards Lasso best graduating student with 10 million naira. You can find the details on page 6. INEC deleted results from Beaver's forensic analyst tells tribunal. Pilot four others on Titanic submersible death, says U.S. Coast Guard. You can find the details on page 29, and that's all in news on Daily Independent. On this day newspaper, federal government states get higher allocation as FEC disburses 786.161 billion naira May revenue. With the rider, FRS target 40 million traders in fresh initiative to improve VAT remittance by informal sector. You can start reading the story on the front page and continue on page 5, and I think it's important that we see a breakdown of how this allocation that has been given to the state, local government, and the federal government will be used judiciously for the welfare and also for, let us see, improvement infrastructure, let us see things improving in the state. Not each time we see an allocation being given to a state, we really can't put a finger on exactly what was done with the fund. So we hope to see that the reverse will be the case at this moment. Still on this day newspaper, shelf electricity tariff hike for collective safety, NLC tells the federal government. You can find that story on page 6. Cost, uh, t okay, cost of Titanic resonate as Titanic submissible employees killing all five on board. You can find that story on page 35. The big story on this day, Tinubu in Paris. Ignoring Nigeria will be perishers to the universe with the writer joins world leaders to tackle debt and poverty issues, says he's prepared for business ready for investors to come to Nigeria. Meet with AfriBank, EBRD president. At meeting with Sheitima, Gate Foundation vote $7 billion intervention for Africa in next four years. You can find details of that. We have picture story to enable meet with macros. You can do well to get more detail of the story, and that's all on this day newspaper. All right, let's. On the Vanguard newspaper. Hello. All right, let's take the score. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. Hello. We are with you, sir. Please go ahead. Good morning. Morning. I'm Sunday calling from Niger. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you to Tassan because he has already said it all. But what I want to say is this. All these uh, contributions that Nigerians are contributing, I don't think that the, even the federal government or the people, uh, the uh, people that is uh, in the authority are hearing what the masses are saying. Like now, we are just uh, about uh, three weeks ago now, from the beginning of this uh, administration, subsidy was removed. Fleeting change in the, uh, in the Nigerian citizens. Now we are hearing a paper tariff that they want to add. All these things, without even uh, maybe saying, uh, like all these government workers, that their salary has been increased to some extent. And they are putting all this uh, tariff and all these uh, fuel subsidies to the masses, suffering the masses. What I'm saying is this all these uh, uh, politicians, we have never had for one day that maybe that their salary has been reduced on the, uh, because of the things, the way things are going in Nigeria. If these people want to really want to fight, they have to start from the head uh, to reduce their salary because. What they are earning is too much. They reduce their salary uh, before splitting uh, uh, all these things to Nigerians. I want to thank uh, somebody like uh, Sam uh, for what he says. If the government will hear and follow the 
the right direction. I hope things will be things will be start getting better in Nigeria. God bless this country. All right, thank, thank you so you much. Very much. On the Vanguard newspaper, FIRS to end multiple taxation, collect market traders BAT. You can find the details on Pick Tree. And dollar video, Kano Antigraph Agency boss vows to reopen Ganduje's case. Nigerians have lost confidence in judiciary coming from lawyers. And the big story, NLC TUC CSO's rise against hiking electricity tariff, the writer says, Tariff hike insensitive and colors increase height of insensitivity to suffering masses. Action unfair, unjustifiable coming from unjustifiable coming from the CSOs. And we have a report that says Nigeria needs thirty-four point five billion dollar investment to provide electricity access by two thousand and thirty. You can find the details inside the paper for the right on page 27 and the big story entirely on page 5. Bandits kill three abduct farmers travelers in Berninguari. Kano declares one week break for school. This is for the Eid El Kabil celebration. You can find the details on page 10. Presidency denies approving salary increase for political office holders and judiciary. Made in Nigeria, noodles safe for consumption, a statement coming from NAVDAQ and something I believe all households should take seriously. Governor Mutfang, Nigeria Press Council, congratulate AZ and Nabia. You can find the details on page 3 and 11. We have a column on page 17 for Awela Kenfa and a, and a sports column on page 31 and that's all news on Vanguard newspaper. A new national star, NLC One FG, against increasing electricity tariff by 40%. You can find that on page 10. Lagos ranked fourth most unlivable city in the world. That's a report. You want to know why they say that? Read detail of that on page 2. The big story, INEC wipe off resort from beavers, forensic experts tell election tribunal. You can find that story on page 23. Assessing 25 days of Tinubu's presidency, the writer says smooth, rough road to public acceptance. You can find that story on page 2. FG denies salary increase for Tinubu and other public office holders. You can find that story as well on page 2. Why you'd call members place calls on our community. This is coming from a school principal you can find inside the paper. And still on E.D. Kabil, there are plans to attack worship center and others. This is an alert coming from the DSS. You can find it through inside the paper as well, and that's all the new national stuff. On Punch Sports Extra, Collins returns from nine-month injury layoff. And for Anthony Joshua, once new opponent for August 12th, Napoli plays 180 million euros price tag on Oshima and then we have City prepare opening offer for Rice. The big story Ibrahim Olawoyi exclusive. We were off football for a month in Turkey because of the natural disaster so coming back to training felt uneasy on its own. It was a long process which is still on my journey from NPFL to Turkey. We have Georgino Keane on Arsenal stay, back her undecided over Zubimendi. United Arch Kane to submit transfer requests. You can find the details on page 4. At the downside of the paper, we have Tijani vows to emulate Olai Cam at Prague. You can find the details on page 7, Juventus 1 party. And that's all the news on Punch Sports Extra. All right, let's take a look at the world of business on Business Day newspaper. F FMCG firm's profit margin drops to 10-year low. FMGC firm profit margin drops to 10-year low. The big story, petrol marketers regulator see margin as competition begins. To find detail of that story inside the paper. MTN demand board meeting over rifts with HIS. You can find that story on page 2. Soft drink sale rise. 53 despite price hike coming from the, that is a report talking about soft drink sales rise by 58 percent despite price hike and an explainer say how Nigeria can curb crook oil theft you want to know how Nigeria can achieve that do well trade that story on page 31 
of the Business D newspaper. And that's how far we can go on the program this morning. Thanks so much, Rachel, for doing this with me. Thank you to our callers who call in on the show to actually contribute positively to all the stories that are going on. And thank you to our crew members, our producer, the general manager, our supporters. We can't do this without you. Thank you so much. And also to the Echo Executive. Until we come you again, do have a blessed weekend ahead.